Hi everyone, my name is Wilbur Donovan and I'm the Head of Department for IT here at Bentley Park College. I'm making this video as a bit of a guide for parents, carers and guardians so that you may be able to assist your child in accessing um, OneNote Classrooms. Now, OneNote Classrooms is just our chosen platform for continuity of learning. And what continuity of learning is, is just a fancy way of saying that if schools are still closed at the commencement of Term 2 on the 20th of April, we will still be sending out work um, and we will still be assessing students. So we still expect that students will be doing the work at home. And one of classrooms is just our way of delivering our lessons, delivering assessments and checking up on student work, right? So marking for student work and giving them feedback. It's important at this point just to make a note that one of classrooms isn't something that we're just doing because of the coronavirus. We actually started upskilling staff before it even hit Australia or before we even thought it would hit Australia. And we will be using it long after it's gone. We currently have planned major upgrades in ICT infrastructure in the college major improvements in how we deliver our digital pedagogy, so how we use IT in our normal lessons and assessments and stuff like that. And there's probably going to be a bit of a move towards uh, encouraging more students bringing their own devices. And OneNote Classrooms is going to be the platform where teachers and students can liaise and communicate and um, engage in learning. Okay, so let's, let's have a look at what OneNote Classrooms is. OneNote Classrooms is part of the Microsoft Office suite, right? So Microsoft Office is just a group of different applications that Microsoft makes, and they include things like Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, Microsoft Excel, Outlook, uh, etc. There's a few others, but those are the four main ones. Um, and it also includes the Microsoft OneNote. And what Microsoft OneNote is, is just an easy way students can gather ideas and move them around and brainstorm and organize their different content and organize their assessment and their lessons and stuff like that. It's starting to become a lot more popular. It's important to know that Microsoft OneNote is not exactly the same thing as OneNote Classrooms, but for the, from the student's point of view, it's pretty much the same thing, right? So the Classroom OneNote is just a plug-in, so like an add-in specifically for teachers, just so that we can organize our students um, and we can see all our student work, that sort of thing. But from the student's point of view, it's the exact same thing, right? So it, it's just as if they had just created their own personal OneNote. They'll see just their own notebooks, and I'll go through what that looks like in a bit and they just do their own stuff in their own notebooks, knowing full well that the teacher can also see it and can also add stuff in. Now, to get started using it, your student, or your child, sorry, will be, uh, must, must be able to access their email address. And to do that, all they have to go to is outlook.com and click the sign in button in the top right and sign in with their school email address. And then um, look for an email that got sent to them by their teachers. So they can either search for their teacher's name in there or they can just scroll down. Um, a lot of the time they don't have too many emails, especially in the junior grades, so it's easily seen. But if, if they're a senior student, that they'll know how to search for their teachers, etc. Um, with the search bar just there. Once you've found it, so I've got another teacher to set this up for me and add me as a test student. And this, this is an example of the email that they'll get sent. So it'll just have their teacher's name at the top left and a big blue button that says open. And to open the OneNote, all they have to do is click on that open button. 
The first time that they access OneNote, they have to go through this way. So there are other ways you can access OneNote, but this has to be the first way. And that's just because accepting it from the email is kind of like accepting that, uh, accepting a request from the teacher to be part of the teacher's OneNote. At this stage, it's best that the student pins that email. And to do that, all they have to do is move their mouse over that um, email summary and click on the, that pin. So I'll, I'll unpin it. I'll scroll down and find it, which is it's here. And I'll click on this pin. So if I move my mouse over, it shows up. It doesn't show up when my mouse isn't over that um, summary. I'll click pin. And all that does is it brings it to the top. So if a teacher sets up a OneNote, say, say the English teacher sets up a English OneNote, they will be using that OneNote for the entire year. So, right? so it's best that they pin it so that they have quick and easy access to all their different OneNotes. So they'll get one per teacher, at least until the end of the year, then they can delete it after that. So, Again, you click opening the email and then just clicking on the big blue open button. And it opens this online version of OneNote. Now, this online version of OneNote looks a little bit different to the desktop version of OneNote, right? And that's important because they'll be using this online version of OneNote all the time at school. And the interface between comparing this version of OneNote and this version of OneNote is obviously very different. They can, if they want, open this exact same OneNote in the, in the actual desktop application. However, we highly recommend that they use this online version because that's what they use at school. So it's best that they get used to what they can and can't do um, in the online version. Right, the features are also slightly different. Um, over here on this side, in this panel, these things are all called sections, right? And a student will have three major groupings of sections, one called the collaboration space, one called the content library, and one with their name on it. Now, if they open up those major groupings, they have what's called a section still in this panel. Right? So here they have a homework section, a class notes section, a quizzes section, and a handout. Those will be different. So those will be up to the individual teachers of those subjects. Um, in the primary school area, most of the time, it's going to be something like maths, English, humanities, science, etc., because they have the same teacher for all those different subjects. In the high school, it's more likely to be something along the lines of um, normal lesson activities, assessments, um, other, something like that, right? But these will change. Now, if I click on one of these, you can see on this side, in this panel, a bunch of pages, right? So currently there's only one, but over the course of several weeks, they'll end up having multiple sections and multiple pages within those sections. And each of this, these pages just has some form of content related to the section. So for example, in class notes, they might have lesson one class notes, another page called lesson two class notes, so on and so forth. And then the student can just come in here and add their pictures, add their text. Uh, a lot of the time, the teachers will actually create these. So the teachers, so the student might log on and sitting inside their, oh, I'll go to quizzes. Sitting inside their quizzes will already be a page called quiz one or something like that, right? So th that's one of the major benefits of OneNote for teachers. We can easily distribute content from our OneNote to every single one of our students, especially things like worksheets and quizzes and assessment and things like that. So um, there might be a whole bunch of questions here and then the student might answer them. And as the student answers them, up in this corner, you see the word saved. And that's because OneNote continuously saves every single thing that the student does as they're doing it, right? So as they're putting in words and pictures and text, it's being saved. 
Now, it's important that they don't leave the OneNote until this saved comes up, right? Here, it's pretty much saving as I'm typing. So as I'm typing, it's saved almost straight away. And that's only because this is just minor amounts of text. If the student's gone and posted in, say, 10 different pictures, it might actually take you know, a minute or so, depending on your internet connection and things like that and how big the pictures are, that sort of thing. Um, so just ensure that this saved word pops up before you exit out of the OneNote once the student is done. Now, to get back in, so if I close that OneNote, to get back in is a similar method. You click on the email and then just hitting open again. Right. And everything that they've done before will be there, plus some stuff that the teacher might have added already. Right. So currently all, at the time of recording this video, most of their OneNotes will be relatively empty and that's because we're still organizing um, content and videos and stuff like that to go onto it. But by the commencement of term two, you'll have at least the first two weeks done. Okay, so that's the OneNote. Um, reasons that we're using the OneNote is one, the OneNote's free. Students can use not only the app version, so the web version, but they can also download a desktop version and that's 100% free. Some of you might not know that students actually have access to the online versions of Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel, and Microsoft PowerPoint, also 100% free. Um, and you can obviously see that they use Outlook for their emails, uh, the online version anyway. OneNote is the only Office application that the student can actually download as a desktop app. Other reasons we used OneNote is all the student work and um, content and information is saved here in Australia. So that's a really important Department of Education rule. So we're not allowed to use platforms where student information, student details are being saved elsewhere. So that's important if you're concerned about privacy and things like that. Students can access it no matter what computer they're using or what device they're using. So if they're using a Mac or a Windows-based device, if they're using Google Chrome or Internet Explorer or anything like that, it all, they access it all the same way, right? Um, they can also download an app for their devices, which I'm gonna run through in a bit, and that'll allow them to do their schoolwork and stuff. Most of the time for most grades, students can actually do their work on their phone. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. It doesn't use a lot of data usually, unless there's links to videos and things like that. Uh, but most of the time it's, fairly straightforward to just quickly type in a response or something like that, depending on the lesson. Now, downloading on mobile devices, the first thing you're going to do is, uh, this, these instructions are the same for both iOS and Android, is go to either the Play Store or the iOS App Store and have a look for OneNote, so just search OneNote. It should be one of the top two responses. If these ads, it's gonna take the top spot, but it should be one of the top two. You're just looking to see if the publisher is Microsoft. And you can kind of tell from the, the name and the iconography and stuff like that, what the official app is. Then you're just going to download it. And once it's downloaded, you're going to um, open it up and it's gonna prompt you for your username and password. Your username is just your email account, so your EQ email account, and your password is your normal EQ password, similar to how you logged on to your emails. And once that's in, you can choose which notebook um, has been shared with you and open that up. But again, you have to go through the email the first time. If your child is using OneNote fairly regularly, instead of having to go through the emails, it might actually be a little bit better if they, if they go to their emails, they click on this three dots, oh sorry, these nine dots in the top left corner, 
and they clicked on OneNote there, right? And this will bring them to a page where all their OneNotes that they've created are here. And there's also a, um, well, kind of like a, a section called Shared With Me. And if they click that, they'll see all the OneNotes that the teacher has added them to. So all the class, all their actual class OneNotes. Now, that's cool because I already have it saved, but you can save this page. So I just deleted it and you can bookmark this page. So in Google Chrome, which is the recommended web browser for this. So if, if your child, your son or daughter is using OneNote a lot, I highly recommend downloading Google Chrome and using that instead of Internet Explorer. However, it works um, in Internet Explorer as well. Um, but, but to save this link, all you have to do is click on that little star if you're using Google Chrome uh, and make sure this is the folder says bookmarks bar and hit done. And that creates a link on your bookmarks bar so that if I get out of this and I go back and click on that link, it'll take them right back to here. Uh, or if they've been logged out, then they'll be able to just type in their username and password and have access to all the OneNotes that they've previously opened through their emails before. Well, that's all I have time for in this video. If you have any questions at all, feel free to ask them in the comments below if you're watching this on Facebook. If you're watching this on YouTube, feel free to ask. Use the comments to ask me a question. What I might do is I might live this for a few weeks and then at the end of the first week in term two, I'll do a quick follow-up video to this where I answer some of the more commonly asked questions. Um, if you'd like, I'm going to drop my email address right here. Feel free to send me a email with a question and I'll try and get back to you as quickly as I can. Thank you.